name is Carlos Mariani Rosa, State Representative and Chair of the Committee on the Minnesota House Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform. I'm joined this morning uh, with my colleagues um, in the House um, to share with you uh, information around hearings that we're going to be having uh, today under the theme of Responsible on Cannabis Day. Uh, our committees, um, and um, uh, I'll be introducing uh, Chair Moran uh, in a second, who chairs the Health and Human Service uh, Policy Committee. Uh, the Public Safety and her committee will be hearing uh, several bills, and we want to share with you uh, about those bills in, in, um, uh, in this press conference. My bill, House File 717, sets up a task force of diverse interests, including health experts, regulatory State Department leaders, law enforcement, community activists, and others to review issues related to possible further legislation, legalization for public safety, public health, tax policy, regulatory oversight related to marijuana. The issues that we uh, aspire this task force to review um, are spelled out uh, in the proposed le legislation, and they include um, a variety of, of pertinent um, uh, issues that arise uh, quickly when we talk about this issue. The, for instance, the educational effects, um, uh, or rather the education about the effects uh, of marijuana, particularly with young people, the treatment for chemical dependency, how to regulate cultivation, processing, transporting, sales, and other uh, components of a mature uh, industry, participation of minority-owned businesses, and uh, to review what statutory changes would need to be made in Minnesota law uh, if we were to move to a full legalization scenario. The task force will use the review to advise the legislature on what it should address in legalizing marijuana beyond current medical access use. The idea, therefore, behind 717 is to not rush towards full legalization without a careful review of potential issues, engage transparently on a broad range of issues with a diverse group of stakeholders, including the public, in a discussion about responsible approaches, learn the pros and cons experienced in other states as they have moved to fuller legalization, and provide all of that information to gather all that and provide that to the legislature for a future determination of fuller legalization efforts. In the meantime, we want to move this year on several responsible laws beyond uh, the engagement and, and uh, uh, review uh, process that I just mentioned. And so I'm joined by several colleagues who are going to talk about uh, some of those bills, and I'll ask my colleague, Chair Moran, to come forward. Thank you, Representative Mariani. So hello, and thank you again so much for being here today. Um, my name is State Representative Rena Moran. I represent District 65A. And I'm also the chair of Health and Human Service Policy Committee here in the Minnesota House. Uh, it's abundantly clear to me and many other Minnesotans that criminal prohibition on the use of cannabis has failed. <laughs> Outdated rhetoric and arguments once used to maintain the status quo are no longer working. Further, we're seeing other harmful effects of the prohibition sending many Minnesotans into the criminal justice system. Enforcement of these laws have carried staggering racial disparities, with Minnesota having some of the worst. While African American whites use marijuana at similar rates, an ACLU report shows that black Minnesotans are over seven times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than white Minnesotans. This leads to a never ending cycle of going in and out of jail prison, and probation. The public isn't served, isn't being served by such a system, and Minnesota are right, and Minnesotans are right to demand a change. 
This conversation isn't over, though. <clears throat> Along with certain folks having long-standing concerns about repealing the prohibition, there are still a number of questions outstanding about what a framework of state legalization would look like regarding topics like cultivation, production, sale, and others. That's why I'm pleased to join Representative Mariani and other legislators here today for our responsible on cannabis approach, which will bring Minnesotans of every viewpoint, background, and expertise together to determine the best path forward. Minnesotans deserve to see state leaders who have record, state leaders have the record discussion about this emerging topics. And Representative Mariani, bill to create a task force would enable just this. In addition to that bill, today in House Human, in, in House Human Services and Policy Committee, we will consider House File 766, a bill to improve the state medical con cannabis program. Some of the changes include increasing the supply a patient may receive from 30 days to 60 days increasing the number of distribution facilities in the state from four to eight, and allowing doctors to use telemedicine when assessing patients for the program. While many of us want to see more robust changes to our state cannabis policy, it's important for us to strengthen the viability of our state's current medical cannabis program in the short term, and this bill does that. The tide is turning. Many of us know the health, the public safety, and the economic benefits of a state direction on cannabis would have for our state. Others have already taken advantage of this. Recently, we were able to have legitimate conversations about this issue and the current policy's real impact on people. I look forward to further action on this issue, moving forward in a responsible way and ultimately ending policies that are harmful to Minnesotans. Thank you so much. Good morning. Um, I'm State Representative Raymond Dean, and I apologize, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, and I also have the honor of chairing the Subcommittee on Elections. And my primary purpose today is, of course, to show support to Chair Mariani and the task force he's putting forward, but also talk about House File 2013. Uh, House File 2013 will uh, ultimately lessen the criminal impact that is associated with cannabis right now. What it actually does is it, it raises the threshold which lowers the penalty associated with quantities of marijuana. And as uh, Representative Moran spoke earlier, we know the disparities are out there. Uh, and this is one way that we can begin to address those disparities by making the penalties uh, reflect the crime and, 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 and the quantities uh, within individuals relative to uh, possession and relative to sale. Uh, I think it's time that we start, while we're going through this process, of deciding what Minnesota's future will be relative to ending the prohibition on cannabis. It will also allow us to address some of the inequities that have happened over the past several decades relative to uh, the war on drugs. You know, uh, let me remind you that for a long, long time, very small quantities of marijuana have been decriminalized. Uh, but at the same time, the impact of that with uh, quantities that are just a little bit larger can be pretty severe for certain people. And uh, I think it's time that we begin to make those changes while we have this conversation about what the future of uh, cannabis in Minnesota is. So thank you all for being here today. And I'll introduce this next guy. He's uh, <laughs> Chair uh, Jack Constantine. Uh, thank you. As Representative Dean said, my name is Jack Constantine. Apologize to those of you that were here earlier because I'm basically going to say the same thing. Um, I grew up on Air Force bases around the world. My father was a SAC pilot, uh, combat pilot. Um, my extended family were 
other people that were on the bases and didn't get a chance to see my own aunts and uncles. Um, and I'd like to highlight uh, Sergeant uh, Ace Callen, your Chief Master Sergeant, worked on the flight line. Um, the entire time I knew the man, he was always in pain. He was a corregidor at the beginning of World War II. He survived the Death March, spent three years in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Um, he didn't make a move that he didn't grunt or wasn't in pain. Now, Ace is long gone, um, but I would like to think that he would have an opportunity to uh, access uh, marijuana if it would have helped his pain. Um, I think our veterans have laid their line, lives on the line, and I would like to think that we are advanced enough to allow them to uh, utilize this if it helps with PTSD, chronic pain, and that's my niche in this. Thank you. Representative Vang uh, uh, can join us uh, this morning. However, uh, we're, we're going to be hearing her bill uh, as well on the Public Safety Criminal Justice uh, Committee later uh, today. Her bill is really quite simple. It deals with CBD uh, products. I'll try to pronounce this ca cannabis oil um, uh, product, which is not psychoactive, and yet it's not clear under Minnesota law whether that's legal or not. And quite frankly, uh, many of us feel that, that what that does is it puts um, our good folks uh, in law enforcement in a really awkward uh, position, perhaps even a wasteful position in being expected or not clear about whether they should be enforcing something that um, I, we think the, the public doesn't think um, ought to fall into that, that ca category because of its non-psychoactive um, uh, nature and because it, it's derived from uh, hemp products uh, itself. So with that, uh, we're open for questions. Representative, the principal concern of the law enforcement community is people driving under the influence, or in this case, let's call it DW high. The question is, what in your discussions with colleagues and with looking at this issue would you do to address those concerns? Yeah, uh, we actually have also a Representative Quam bill uh, that we'll be hearing in public safety that uh, lays out the uh, ability for us to have a planned approach for identifying an instrument, a tool, a process uh, that can uh, accurately identify uh, individuals driving under the influence uh, when, when it comes to uh, THC marijuana. The, the issue, quite frankly, is that it's, it's, a, it's chemically a very difficult uh, issue. Uh, we've uh, spoken with experts at the University of Minnesota in, uh, in chemistry uh, who have been uh, studying uh, the ways different states have approached this and, and other countries as well. There's a wide range of, of, of approaches uh, from the purely subjective nature of just having your local law enforcement, uh, you know, who, the stopping officer, for instance, make a determination. I think most of us would think that's not a fair, um, you know, objective way. Uh, but what that really points to is the fact that all the other known uh, practices right now, whether the uh, uh, urinary uh, samples, blood samples, um, um, I'm not sure what, what the others are, that they're inaccurate. Um, and, and so part of this, I think, is to have a conversation, quite frankly, uh, about uh, not falling into the uh, thinking that uh, the way to deal with this, to understand this, is the way we understand alcohol uh, in driving. Two different uh, elements, two different impacts uh, on, the, on the body, and to some degree, perhaps even two different uh, results in terms of driving. The point is to demystify all that, have this task force spend some time, among other issues, diving deep into that so they can come back with recommendations. I think every legislature, legislator here uh, wants to know, uh, you know what the public safety on the roads uh, issue and threshold is, uh, and not just to jump to conclusions about that. Representative, uh, we understand that a big part of this is a decriminalization. Is, is that accurate, uh, that you will look at that in, with this task force and with bills? And if that's so, what happens to the people who have been convicted of crimes? Uh, do we let them out? Do you go back in time to expunge? What, what, what would the process be? Yeah, uh, very good and difficult questions. Uh, I think uh, I, I have my personal uh, preferences, which is, which is uh, to me, generally, which is to me, it makes no sense, um, and quite frankly, more than no sense, it, it feels unjust that we would move toward a, a broad, legalized um, 
um, uh, structure and reality in the state uh, while still condemning folks um, in the past. Uh, if they were, uh, quote unquote, discovered today, there would be no penalty. Uh, quite fr frankly, I think it raises questions about safety and efficacy inside our corrections system. Uh, imagine, if you will, trying to regulate uh, the rehabilitation uh, efforts, the reentry efforts, let alone the housing efforts of individuals uh, who are now caught um, in a, uh, a system that's punishing them for something that was punishable in the past but isn't punishable now, I think it would be very difficult to do. Uh, expungement and reaching back um, is a very difficult process. The, there are valid uh, considerations, both pros and cons, uh, relative to how you do that. Uh, my hope is that, uh, our hope is that this task force uh, will, will dig into that and offer balance, uh, fair proposals uh, for how to lift individuals uh, who were caught in the past uh, into uh, hopefully a very quick and expeditious reentry into society. What about votes? Is this the version that you have to put forward to get it off the floor in the House? Uh, I'm sorry, what was the first part of Votes. That? Votes. Is this the version that you would have to put forward to get the votes to get it off the floor? You know, we've been gaining uh, good support steadily. Um, that's been demonstrated by uh, a, a number of groups. So today we're going to have uh, testifiers. Let me pull up my list. Um, uh, we'll have a broad range of testifiers. They're all at different levels uh, of, of, of support, but many of them are saying, hey, this is uh, the right approach for us to move forward. So we have the County Attorneys Association, uh, the Minnesota Police uh, and Peace Officers Association representative, um, and uh, the ACLU, uh, and a, a number of, of uh, advocacy groups like Sensible Minnesota, uh, the MMR group, um, and, um, and, and we're getting some traction in the Senate. Uh, we just learned recently that a Republican Senator, Senator Scott Jensen, um, has or will be signing on uh, to the Senate version uh, of this bill. There's support from the Republican Liberty Caucus. Uh, there's, uh, uh, we're expecting more Republicans uh, to sign on. We have letters of support from Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus, the National Council of Jewish Women in Minnesota, Jewish Community Action, uh, a number of uh, civil rights groups, the NAACP, um, Council on Latino Affairs, Council on African Heritage, Marijuana Policy Project, that all has been building uh, quite literally within the last uh, couple of weeks or so. Uh, we think that that uh, provides, as an experienced legislator, I have to say, that, that I guess some people say that provides cover. I think that just provides a signal uh, and an expectation for us as the elected officials uh, to move uh, steadily forward. And so my hope is, I, I haven't vote, counted the votes, uh, my hope is uh, that uh, as this bill continues to shape, that, that we're going to continue to add public support to it, which uh, will translate, at least in the House, uh, should translate into strong uh, legislative support as well. Are you going to hear a legalization bill in, this, in the House? We do, like, not have a, we, do, we do not have a legalization bill scheduled in the House. My understanding is the Senate is hearing one uh, soon, but we, so we don't. The Senate Republicans will hear a legalization bill, but the House DFL will not. Maybe backward. I think the better measure will be to see what the Senate Republicans do with any bill relative to what the House is going to do with this bill. Is this, and, a, sig oh, sorry, no, no, uh, is this a signal then that uh, following up on that, that uh, don't expect that this year you want to slow it down just a little bit with a task force to report back on all of the ramifications? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I can only speak for myself. I, I think we, we have colleagues that, that uh, if there is a pathway, would um, still want to be open to uh, pushing forward a much more assertive stance. Um, uh, we're not seeing, I'm not seeing that pathway now. Uh, this uh, stands, um, quite frankly, on its, in my opinion, on its own pretty smartly, you know, which is if you're going to do anything big, then uh, know what you're doing. And I think, you know, some of the, some of the messages um, that we're getting from other states uh, that moved uh, quickly and first on this um, is, um, is really uh, re reaffirming uh, that wisdom. 
Um, you know, there's questions in Colorado and California about a number of different aspects. I suspect that those legislators are now struggling with that. Uh, we want this task force to look at what, uh, what is happening there so that uh, there, we minimize what the unintended consequences might be and the surprises might be. Is the reality then that the Minnesota legislature is not ready to vote either chamber, Democrats, Republicans, House, Senate, on full legalization at this point? I, I have heard from the Senate Majority Leader that that's not going to happen um, in their body. Um, uh, quite frankly, it's perplexing to me that, um, I, I mean, what I've heard is not even this is going to happen uh, in that body. It's perplexing to me that as, as you uh, look at the list of folks, the broad diversity of folks who are saying, yes, let's get together, study, review, let's be responsible, including law enforcement, that the Senate Majority Leader thinks somehow that he's smarter than law enforcement and smarter than the broader uh, public. So uh, what I'm hearing is it's not going to happen there. Uh, we'll see what happens with the bill that's being uh, teed up uh, to be heard. Um, my bet is that they're not going to pass that bill. Uh, I don't know what their motive is for pulling it up, but we'll see soon enough. Um, I think that we are closer to assertive uh, action on the part of the, the House itself. But I think what's happening with this bill is a lot of members are saying, you know, Carlos, um, I might be okay uh, with full legalization, but, the, but I have a lot of questions. And we've got a process here that's going to help us answer what those questions are. I think that's a responsible way to, le to legislate. Path, standalone path, or could this get somehow lumped into global negotiations? Boy, that's a good question. You know, a lot, some of that is a little bit above my pay grade, but... Um, <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, the way I want to legislate is to lead, to create as many uh, options uh, possible, and so uh, a standalone uh, pathway uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, but I'm not going to lock myself in right now in terms of, you know, folding it into you know a bigger package. We'll see, you know, what kind of momentum continues to grow with this. You mentioned the word study in regards to what the different effects of the different parts of marijuana or cannabis, cannabis are, where are you gaining your science? Where do you expect to gain your science on this question? Um, well, we certainly have interacted uh, informally with, with uh, um, uh, scientists. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we spent some time with a um, um, uh, professor in chemistry at the University of Minnesota. Um, so we certainly are looking uh, to expand uh, the number of folks in different fields, you know, so, you know, folks who, and quite frankly, quite frankly, uh, people who are not just um, academics about this issue, but are also practitioners. So I think it is important to hear directly from law enforcement. I think it is important to hear directly from uh, people providing chemical dependency treatment. Frankly, I think it's important to hear from folks in the private sector in terms of what is a fair uh, market system that the state can encourage uh, to, to develop. So I think uh, part of the answer is that we're going to be looking to a broad array of folks who are both uh, academically steep but, but as, as well um, uh, are practicing in, in particular fields. One more. What are the current thresholds um, as far as criminal or criminal penalties step in and how would you change that? <clears throat> Well, the, the thresholds are in the bill that's up today. Um, you're going to make me find it. Um, we changed it to uh, 42.5 grams, and I believe it's in the upper to mid-20s currently. And I don't don't see that called out in, in, in the current bill, but it, it almost doubles uh, the quantities. That you're allowed to carry. Pardon? That, that a person can carry or that... that, that uh, for possession and also for sale. And as of right now, we do have the support of county's attorneys uh, on that legislation as well. Thank you, Aaron. Will you take a public question? Yeah, come He's on chair. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> it's been 30 years since Governor Perpich put a task force on this topic. And Governor Perpich's task force issued this report so we're looking at. I just want to thank the four of you and the other legislators who have gotten this off of dead center. But I wonder whether you will 
really consider a more balanced kind of a task force. Uh, for example, you're speaking about the marketing. Well, our state constitution has language in it about marketing farm mm -hmm. and garden products. Uh, the I public we're, is, we're, is who you're we're all, we're not on for. Uh, we're absolutely yeah. open to, to that. We've been taking recommendations both from uh, advocacy groups, frankly, from law enforcement, uh, and uh, as well as members about uh, continuing to shape the nature and the balance of the task force. We are totally open to that. The point isn't to predetermine one way or the other, you know, a particular ideology. The point is to do solid objective fact finding. And to do that, it's good to have, it's vital to have a balanced group of, of interests there. So yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank that. you. It's a good idea. Yeah. I just think that it's not, not yet uh, we'll really get there. balanced. We'll get there.